Welcome back. We're going to talk movement mastery today. I want to cover GHD, GHD sit-ups specifically, give you a few hacks, a few tips that have helped with my efficiency. If you're in the CrossFit sport or the functional fitness sport world, these do show up periodically. They can really crush your midline. But with these simple tricks or these simple tips, I think you'll be able to be more efficient, stay more relaxed when you're doing them. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the setup and the positioning of the foot plate. This is kind of the standard Rogue Fitness uh, version 2.0 of their GHD. Uh, is what they, they tend to use a lot in competitions. Um, what I think is most important is finding a foot plate setting that is furthest away from the pad that allows you to still complete the repetition. Why do I like that? When I put this almost all the way back to the end, what that allows for me to do is it allows for me to keep my legs relatively relaxed and outstretched as I go back into my GHD sit-up. Alternatively, when I see people with very, very close foot plates and their butt is hanging way off the backside, there's a lot of tension that needs to be held in your legs in order to hold you into a safe or a powerful or effective position. So legs are working really hard as you go through this range of motion. They never get a chance to relax. I see people doing big sets of GHD sit-ups. Of course, it's gonna tax your midline, but I see people getting cramped up in their quads, in their hip flexors. That's the area that we can save by putting the foot plate further back. So again, I'm gonna go as far back as I can while still being able to achieve the full range of motion on the GHD. When I'm in this position, my butt's basically right on top of the pad and I can still get enough range of motion flexibility to get down and touch the floor. The second thing we're going to talk about is the arm swing and arm position. So as I come down, one technique or one tip is to swing your arms out to the side, touch the ground, and as you come up, bring them up and around the side again. Remember, if you reach your arm over your head, the further over the head they are as you come up, the, the longer the lever arm and the more torque is gonna to be placed on your hips, on your hip flexors, and on your core. So by keeping the arms swinging out to the side, we're essentially keeping the, uh, the total weight that you're actually having to lift a little bit lower. So arms swing to the side, tap, back up, and tap, and keep them out to the side. Um, the last hack that I have here for you, and I learned this indirectly by doing workouts where I was squatting and doing GHD sit-ups is I would have my knee sleeves on so that after the GHDs I could go and do my squats. Well, when you have your knee sleeves and they're down here around your ankles and you wedge them in between these pads, you get a very snug, tight, secure feeling in your feet. I started off by saying it's important to be able to relax your legs. This little hack allows me to relax my legs a lot more. I don't have to flex my feet very hard. I don't have to do anything with my lower legs in order to keep them in a good place. I can stay almost completely relaxed in my lower body down here, focus the work on my hip flexors and my core, and use my arm circles to generate momentum and keep me efficient. Every time I come back up, I'm looking for that momentary relaxation in my legs to recharge and then go back into my next repetition. For those of you who are constantly on tension with your legs as you're doing GHT sit-ups, you will burn out very fast. You will get really cramped up in your legs. And if you gotta do anything like box jumps or squats after the GHT sit-ups, you're gonna be in trouble. So I hope these hacks help you. Comment below, let me know what you think. Tag a friend, like it. We'll see you guys next time.